Welcome. It's all anime archaeology. Exactly. Uh, uh, welcome to the latest anime news for the week ending August 28th, 2021. And Bandai Namco Collectibles is holding another Gundam Online Expo event this Ooh. week. Maybe yeah, I'll actually get the gun this month. Yeah, it began on the 26th and will run through September 6th, so you have time. Uh, free to attend on the website, which is in the news links for those of you who are interested. Uh, programming includes workshops, panels, specially produced video content, and event exclusive collectibles, of course. Oh, naturally. And new additions this year, including the 2021 <clears throat> Gunpla Builders Cup winners, which is a thing they've been doing every year, uh, and the new Gunpla Livestream Shopping Experience. Which is basically described as QVC for Gundam. <laughs> Which I have not checked out yet, but very, very much want to. Um, it sounds like it could be funny. <laughs> <laughs> to say the least. Um, it'll be co-hosted by people at both the US and Tokyo Bandai Namco locations. Um, Mythbusters Adam Savage will also be joining in the fun with a, wow. uh, quote, one-of-a-kind Gunpla build video, end quote. I know, um, I saw some videos from a couple of years ago where he was made aware of Gunpla and was like, that's really cool, but I don't know Gundam well enough to sort of, you know, dig into that myself. And so he did like, like the Bondi Star Wars models. So he did some of those over time. Um, so I guess he's getting into Gunpla now, which is cool. Nice. Um, this year's expo will also feature video content from current and future Gundam titles, both anime and live action. <clears throat> including screenings and event-only reveals. They're showing some of the new um, uh, Gundam, uh, Gundam Build live-action series, uh, which I actually watched a little bit of uh, this week, um, and is very interesting. Well, we'll talk about that in a second. Um, attendees of the Expo can virtually visit the Gundam Base Tokyo, uh, which is the world's largest gunpla exhibition, and the Gundam Factory Yokohama um, also hosted a special insider tour video for the Expo, and is also hosting various uh, virtual tour tours on their own website. Um, yeah, the live action version is basically um, set in the world of Gundam Build, where you actually take Gunpla to like video game parlors, and it gets scanned, and then you play a video game with your Gunpla. Um, only in this version, um, drones fly out to real world locations and cr create this like scanning hologram which recreates the battle you're having in VR, in the thing, full size in the real world. Oh, wow. Wow. <laughs> so you get two teenagers with, like, VR goggles on, kind of doing this at each other, and then separately, like, at a dam someplace in Yokohama, there are a bunch of people like, ooh, look at that, as, you know, an RX-78 is, you know, beating on some mecha. <laughs> hey man, you just start driving your car. <laughs> hey, where the hell did I come from? Look at that beautiful sunset. See the tree over there? Oh, look at that. Uh, it's very interesting. Um, what, behind Godzilla? Right, yeah, pretty much. <laughs> yes. yes. Um, and uh, the, I will say the, the acting on two of the, the main characters is really impressive. Like, they pulled me in. Like, I was like, okay, I'm curious where this relationship is going. Like, you've kind of gone somewhere nicely like that. So, a lot of it is just kind of set up otherwise. But right. I'm curious. I'm definitely very curious. Um, but, yeah. Um, so, yeah, so that's, that's coming up. Um, what would you all like to see in a Gundam Expo? Everything. Me? <laughs> Physically, <laughs> actually, there. That's what I'd yeah. like to say. Yeah, sure. Right. Yeah, yeah. I, I like I like the idea of doing this all. You know, being able to to, to peek in on it. But yeah. gosh, I just want to be able to actually be someplace and do something like that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm very curious about the um, being able to see uh, the Gunpla World Cup uh, because what they do with Gunpla in terms of setting up all those dioramas and all this stuff is always so impressive. Yeah. So being able to you know mm. get that like well produced view of all those and not just somebody with a camera you know like a cell phone walking by, yeah, that'd be nice. Which I mean, and again, the literal eyes on because that's when you can actually stop and be like, oh, look mm. underneath mm. underneath that rock ledge, there's like something under there, there's something mm. else going on, or like, hey, look, there's you know this piece that they detailed on that, and mm. it's you can't yeah. some of that you just don't get with a camera. And I'm I'm hoping they'll they'll do like the the 
360 view stuff too. Um, yeah. so you can actually like, spin around and look at it from all the angles. That'd be cool. Oh yeah. Yeah. Mm. Whatever. All of it. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> all the things. Um, meanwhile, Shueisha and Shonen Jump Plus are launching a new smartphone app designed to simplify the process of making manga and allow anyone to try out making their own, even if you don't have the usual skills required to draw manga traditionally. The World Maker app, launching first in closed beta on September 8th and then open beta on the 22nd, will let anyone with a smartphone or tablet create an entire short manga by breaking down the process into steps and providing preset templates for each step. So you start by creating dialogue, and then you select characters and backgrounds and so on, with each set featuring templates for each major element. Um, and to celebrate the launch, um, they've announced the contest World Maker Name Award, where the winning entry will be illustrated by either Romi Oishi of Lockdown Zone or Shiro Usazaki of Act Age and others, and will feature in the Shonen Jump Plus Act. The winner will also receive a prize package worth 300,000 yen, and mm -hmm. 3,000 bucks US. Um, entries will be accepted through October 8th and be judged by a panel including Oishi, Uzizaki, and the editorial department of Jump Plus. That sounds like fun. Yeah. Yeah. I yeah. like the idea of that. Yeah, I mean, I think whenever these things come out, people always expect, oh, I'll be able to, you know, take what's ever in my brain and put it exactly oh, in the right, app. Yeah. It's never like that. But I think when people yeah. take it in that, oh, this will be fun. I'll see what I can throw together. It'll be, it's a, it's a fun tool. Also, I think it will provide, uh, Depending on you know how good the submissions are, it provides a nice pool of people that you might be yeah. able to tap for stories and talent. Yeah. yeah, and this is one of the things is that you know a lot of of, of uh, manga will have a separate writer, right? Like that, that's fine. So being able to take a writer who can't draw, but have them be able to assemble a manga, like okay, we have an illustrator for you. Great, right. you know, go for it. Totally, um, it's an interesting sort of connection point of saying you know we're gonna we're gonna automate the illustration side to find the writers, right? Yeah. <laughs> that work. It's smart. Um, moving on to more controversial topics. Um, those who've been looking forward, or not, to the live-action Cowboy Bebop. Um, sure. Your wait is finally almost over. Netflix announced this week its live-action adaptation will premiere on November 19th. The company also posted photos of the main characters. Uh, John Cho as Spike, Mustafa Shakir as Jet, and Daniela Pineda <coughs> as Faye, and of course, <coughs> I'm the most important character. Um, yes. And you can see them up there. Uh, we have some some actual imagery, and it's always hard, you know, taking something like Bebop, which actually has a rather flat affect to a lot of its illustrations, and yep. seeing it in the real world. Um, but, uh, yeah, what do you guys think? Well, I, I have bated breath anticipation. I want it to succeed. Mm -hmm. It's one of those things where I just want this to be good, mm -hmm. <clears throat> knowing that Netflix has a tendency to, <laughs> you know, looking at Death Note. Mm -hmm. I'll never let that go. Um, <clears throat> that horrible remake. Uh, anyway, so uh, when I saw the pictures, though, I was very heartened. Um, I think the actors mm -hmm. pretty much all embody in some way, shape, or form. The, the, the characters are playing. Mm -hmm. I'm glad that they're using a corgi because for a while there, the rumor was they were going to use a husky. Oh, interesting. Uh, huh. Yeah. <clears throat> As, but because, well, huskies are, are a little bit smaller. Oh, yeah. And fair. easier to train. Mm -hmm. They should have used Jack Russell's. Yeah. All the way. 100%. <laughs> but I'm glad they're, 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 they're using corgis. And, um, and of course, you know, as we all know, the soundtrack, Joe you Kano's know, going to be the soundtrack, the soundtrack to all that. So I am I am cautiously optimistic, and if it turns out to be garbage, which I really hope it does not mm -hmm. pan out to be that way. If it does, then you will hear the scream all the way <laughs> from where you live. A very distraught, distraught. No. I also think they did a very good job of Faye's outfit because yes. you know Faye's one of those characters where. If an actual human woman tried to walk around in that outfit, it would just spring off her at every you know possible at any moment. Um, and, and they talked about Otakon that. twenty fourteen. <laughs> so Otakon twenty fourteen. So I go dressed in that outfit from the anime, and I was just like, "How are you? 
where is your protection? Because I, Gal- you know, Galaxy Con and mm-hmm. I think this Otacon yeah. this year, I think there were people dressed as Faye. I'm pretty sure I, I saw a couple at least. No, I saw an interview with uh, Man Faye, um, who's a guy who dresses as Faye in, in, in the West Coast. And he talked about how, yeah, this is a, not an outfit you can wear for long periods. Um, yeah. you, know, you go out, you wear it, and then you, you, know, you go back to your hotel room after a little while because things shift. Um, and um, apply the paint remover so you can get it all off. Right, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Move on with your night. Um, and so the outfit is definitely sexy, um, you know, w- without being something that's kind of hard to, to move around in or whatever or to use on set. So I'm yeah. uh, I'm glad to see that. Um, and yeah, just intrigued. Um, it's interesting too because I think Cowboy Bebop can't work the same live action, but I think you can definitely make something that feels like that kind of, you know, noir homage that Cowboy Bebop is in yeah. live action. So, we'll see. But, yeah, curious to see how it works out. I, I will wait to see what your guys' opinions are. <laughs> well, as I said before, my, you know, I'm not looking forward to it with bated breath in the sense that I expect it's going to be amazing, but I'll give it a shot. Right. You know, we'll see how it goes. Uh, also this week... There we go. Um, anime inspired by video games are nothing new, though this week's edition is a little more unusual. A short anime was announced for the Nintendo Switch Fitness Boxing Games called You and Fitness Boxing. And will feature five minute comedic episodes about the daily lives of the game's instructors. <laughs> That'll come October 1st. Um, a TV anime was also announced based on the song. Heroin Tarumono by Vocaloid creator Honeyworks. Uh, the anime is titled To Become a Good Heroine, The Unpopular Girl, and The Secret Job. Features a high school girl who becomes a manager in training for her classmate's idol unit, of course. Um, okay. Anaplex revealed the new original TV anime Fanfare of Adolescence this week, which might go in for most misleading title of the season. Uh, coming in spring of next year, the story takes place at a highly competitive Horse Racing Academy, where boys train to become jockeys. Interesting. Yeah. Uh, that <laughs> is totally not, totally not the title. But that's a Musume Derby, Derby Girl. Right. It was all, all like horse right. girls. Mm-hmm. So this is uh, interesting. Yeah. Yeah. Which, by the way, I don't know if folks know, um, that DVD, or the Blu-ray of that was the highest selling Blu-ray of anime ever. Like, like um, the third or fourth one. Musume Derby Girls? Yes, yeah, Derby Girls. Yeah. What? Yeah, it, 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 it sold wow. untold numbers of copies when it came out because it's based on a smartphone game. Okay. And if you buy the Blu ray, you got a chance for a thing in the smartphone game. Uh, yeah, they did the thing. Uh, they did the thing. Okay. Yes, but it, it broke all sorts of records, which is probably why we're getting a season two. Um, you know, that's probably where that came from. <laughs> um. Toei is producing an anime film adaptation of Kana Ozawa's Blue Thermal Aonagi College Sports Festival Aviation Club, which might go for the most accurate title. Uh, coming in March of 2022, the manga's protagonist enters college and ends up unexpectedly joining her university's glider club. Um, as in, you know, full glider, you know, not hang glider, actual, right. like, polyamorous mm-hmm. glider. So that, that looks, looks cool. Looks kind of slice of life-ish. Heck of a university that has, happens to have a glider. Yeah, club. exactly. Wow. Um, the official website for the Girls und Panzer das Finale film fear, uh, uh, series revealed the third Ooh. film's Blu ray DVD release will include a new OVA titled Daikon War, which will ship with the film December 24th. Ooh. This week also brings more Lupin the Third related news. This time, TMS Entertainment and Magnetic Press are publishing a tabletop role playing game. Based really? on the franchise. Yes. <laughs> um, it'll feature adventures and heights in an open world quests system and will use a Magnetic Press variant of the legendary D6 West End rule set. More about that in a second. Uh, the company's also announced a new retrospective coffee table book celebrating the anime's 50th anniversary, including, they claim, comprehensive looks at each episode and season. As what? well as the characters, artwork, and media adaptations. So it'll be about wow. Yatol. Oh, yeah, I was going to say, <laughs> is it a coffee table book or a coffee table book? <laughs> yeah, exactly. Oh, yes. <laughs> it's a dining room set. <laughs> <laughs> everything about everything. Oh, okay. 
Lord. You realize, of course, if it's going to be that comprehensive, this is going to be like a a real, true 50th anniversary price as well. Right. Because there is no way in hell you're going to do that on the cheap. No. Um, I'm actually just looking up here real quick. Um, and granted, Lupin's been around for a long time, but it's not like the TV series has been on air continuously. Um, if we go down... Um, uh, 178... Um, that doesn't say... Uh, 178, then... 50, so that's 228, right? Um, plus 13, so that's 241. Um, plus 26. Yeah, so it's only 200 episodes or so. Maybe 250. So, now that I think about it, I mean, obviously, in-depth is up for debate. Yeah. But it's something you, you could conceivably cover every episode, you know, in a comic table book. Potentially. It'll be cu- interesting to see them try. Yes, exactly. <laughs> and, and I still want it. Exactly. Um, and when I said legendary, um, the D6 system is what the Star Wars RPG was based off of. Um, hmm. That RPG was so successful, the lore in the D6 Star Wars RPG became official Lucasfilm lore. Like they, in, oh, wow. they invented races and characters and so forth that ended up like in the movies. It's that, yeah, it's that crazy. <laughs> Damn. So it's a very, very well respected um, uh, from that perspective. And obviously, wow. you know, so they did well on that one. Cool. Um, so yeah, so that, that is stuff coming, which is exciting. Um, but I'm was- surprised that there was no mention of Hatsune Miku. Why is that? Because she is doing, sh- is it Cho or Sho Kabuki? Oh. Coming up, it's like in the next month, they're having a live Kabuki theater presentation. And Miku is going to be in it. They're going to somehow integrate her into a Kabuki play. Wow. Really? Yeah. And I'm like, it's like, I think it's 3,000 yen or something for a ticket. Oh, or, nothing. I'm not, yeah. I'm, not sure, I'm not sure how much it is, but it's just like. And you can, I, I think you can, you can either view it. It's like from so like September twelfth. Oh, or this makes. Like, oh, okay, yeah. So they're gonna do yeah. the thing. So yeah. if you guys have seen the the Hatsune Miku concerts, they have yeah. this sort of holographic technology. They have a screenshot here of what I'm assuming is basically like the uh, um, uh, rehearsal. Um, and so they have you know Miku behind them in full 3D, and then the actors in front of the project. Fascinating. Yes, I, I, really cool. I'm, I'm so, like, I'm just, I'm on the edge of it. I'm like, I want to buy into this. Because I, <laughs> I stumbled across her uh, Indonesia concert that was on, they had it on mm-hmm. Crunchyroll a number of years ago. Yeah. And I was just like, oh, I've never seen Miku. I don't know what this is about. And I watched the entire thing. It was like an hour and a half of all of her songs. And I'm just like, this is a crazy future that I like living in. This is neat. <laughs> and then yep. that's when I saw that she went on um, uh, Letterman. Before oh, really? He wow. From the, from the, I didn't know that. Late show. Huh. Yeah, and it's like, of course, David Letterman talking to a Japanese right, yeah. hologram was quite amusing. <laughs> but <laughs> it was still just the seamlessness of it, the, mm. the scrim that she's on or whatever the screen is they use, that he's just standing next to her and full 3D rendering. It looks yeah. like she's freaking standing next to her. I'm like, mm. oh, my God. And, and part of the, the, the Kabuki stuff, mm. they show a, uh, a still – of like the main male Kabuki actor, mm-hmm. and she's standing like back to back with right. him. Right. Yeah. And I'm like, holy. <laughs> yeah. What blew my mind? Um, that's all the news for the week. Um, <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> no, that's, it, it, it's good. I'm glad you, you, you included that. 